What is going on everybody, Victor here. Now we're starting this video off with a big old giveaway. I will be choosing five winners and those winners can go on the Dexter Outdoors website, pick any knife of their choice, whether it be these really cool sushi knives, we got barbecue knives, filet knives, any knife of your choice. Now all you have to do to enter is three things. Subscribe to my new cooking channel, subscribe to the Dexter Outdoors YouTube channel, which honestly is a really good channel because it's got a ton of how-to educational filet videos and comment down below in this video, save 20% off Dexter Knives, use code Landshark. That way I can count your entry and I know it's not just a regular comment. Good luck to everybody and let's move on with today's video. Let's see if Vic can get it. <laughs> come on, come on, come on. Up off the bottom. That's, that came up. Yeah, this is gonna be a mark. Kidding me? Man, it's got to pop way harder than I thought he would. Well, is it the day we do an Atlantic sharp nose catch clean cook? It might be. It's not a giant like you don't need a bunch of people. So check this out. Even though I caught a mutton, a lot of people have actually commented saying that these guys are super good to eat. So this is an Atlantic sharp nose. We can actually catch quite a few of them and there's days where we'll catch like, it's all we'll catch, 10, 12 of them. So I'm not going to show this on camera, but what I'm going to do, like with any shark, like we did with the black tip, I'm going to gut it and I'm going to bleed it immediately. So to bleed it, you can right, do right here. There's an artery right here and he'll bleed out. And also when you gut him, when you go insert your knife from here to here, all the guts will come out and he's also going to bleed himself too because sharks excrete a lot of toxins and ammonia and, and just bad smelling stuff through their skin. So if you don't do that, as soon as you catch it, you're going to spoil your meat. So that's what we're going to do. Like you got... Like a, like a halibut or something, or a big flounder. <laughs> <laughs> it's like a, a door, uh, real enough a All door. Alright Vic, well, you enjoy it. And you, no, this isn't what we've been hooking because ours have been scoping way out. I don't know, it's, it's funky, I'll tell you that. It's real funky. He's been, poor guy's probably been hooked so many times, he's like, all right, it's it, I'm showing my face. Oh, <laughs> my mom says good, she wants to see it. Oh yeah, big nurse shark head shakes. Yeah, but all the ones that my mom hooked have gone way out though. A couple of them went straight, straight down, but yeah, that's true. This guy isn't the straight out one. He's a big guy, I'll tell you that. I want to see what kind it is, at least. Yeah, come on, we need Enjoy to see. Enjoy it. We need to see what's been busting us off all day long. <laughs> so you'd probably think, why isn't a shark taking a bunch of line? Something like a nurse shark, they'll kind of stay up and down, and they just do gator rolls down there. They don't really run out, they kind of just twist around like crazy. You're at this weight? Yeah. This is when you wish you weren't pushing a really long leader, huh? Mm-hmm. I think it's a nurse shark. Be very yeah. careful. Nurse. Very careful, Vic. Very careful. hooked some really big fish like actual fish that have went offshore and we've hooked all sorts of things taking us into rocks and but I bet a few of our breakoffs were probably those guys and nurse sharks they're just like a snapper grouper they'll go right into the rock and they'll just lodge themselves in there and you can't get them out okay let's see what this shark is all about so like I told you guys on the boat I did gut it so there's its gut cavity all the guts removed 
anything that could really spoil or taint the meat and like I said sharks will excrete basically urine through their skin and they'll continue to do that process after they die so it's really important to gut it and bleed it immediately also this is a shark species that does not get very big the average size we catch them is around this big we've caught them up to four foot but that's like a monster shark nose these guys they they look like baby sharks essentially so shark skin is super tough so it's important to have a really sharp knife and even if you have a sharp knife you got to make sure you give it some muscle because getting through this stuff is like sandpaper it's like trying to fillet sandpaper the last time i filleted a shark it was a uh a black tip shark and what I did is I removed the head I removed the head and the fins to try to make it easier because a larger shark is really hard to fillet but this guy we're not gonna do that tip of our knife just like we do with any fish kind of just outline our shark and now sharks don't have bones they got cartilage but if this is anything like the uh, the black tip shark was cartilage is still pretty firm very similar to bone. So you guys see, I, I have a tough time getting through there because it's it's tough stuff. So we made that initial outline. Now I try to get on the cartilage, or what I think feels like something hard. And we just work our way up. very windy so excuse the wind if it's ruining the mic but we just got a little cold snap down here in Florida even though it's not cold these cold snaps produce a lot of wind and there we go wow not a Looks bad looking beautiful. fly so check it out so this is what I mean they don't have a it's not bone it's it's cartilage um, it kind of looks like bone but there's what your little shark fillet looks like and it's very white meat if it's going to be anything like the black tip shark that we've eaten before very firm i plan on frying these guys up because last time we actually cooked them on the grill and made like a stir fry out of them this time we're going to go with the good old fish fry recipe it looks beautiful yeah it does Woo! that's what i'm talking about that's that wind it's blowing like 20 to 30 miles per hour right now Tell you one thing shark skin does not taste good so we're gonna take the skin off and by the way these are dexter knives that i'm using and you guys can actually save 20 percent off all dexter knives if you guys use my code land shark it's going to be on the screen here and also linked below so if you guys see i left a little bit on but you want to leave a little bit of meat on the skin because that is that really red red meat and we missed a little bit of skin here just gonna shave away but all in all it looks pretty good they do have a pretty big bloodline so you can definitely sacrifice some meat on the skin doesn't smell at all really looking forward to it so i'll catch you guys in the kitchen this is the sharp nose shark i had it sitting in the fridge for about two hours just coated in some buttermilk it was in there for two hours and then this is a mixture of cornmeal flour and this stuff right here cajun seasoning which is very similar to blackened seasoning is our coated fish these ones are just about ready beautiful golden brown shark bites and we're keeping it simple tonight because last time we cooked shark we did it up we had a big barbecue tons of friends and family um, we did it two ways i did like a stir fry as well as on the barbecue so we already know what shark tastes like but this time we wanted to do just fried shark because why not okay so we just got some peanut oil and we're just frying these guys up and if you look to the left of me there's a big pot and you guys have been asking me to do a fish tea, a fish head soup recipe for a long time. And guess what? The day has finally come. But that's going to be posted on my second channel, which I'm going to have linked below. And thank you to anyone who has subscribed to it. I actually got a lot of feedback and I'm really happy. We got almost 5,000 subscribers in a week with only one video. So I seriously want to thank you guys if you guys 
have subscribed because it means a lot. We're just finishing up our fish head soup. Like I told you guys, that's gonna be on the second channel. And then check this out. You can, you can take some. We got really nice and crispy shark. Let's break that open and see what it looks like. It's super firm. Look at that steam coming out of there. Real white meat. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I can't believe how good this shark is. Usually you catch a, a little shark and you think, ah, oh, pain in the neck. Gotta unhook it. But if you're not catching anything else, th this is a, a delicious meal. I can't believe this is shark. Dang. It's so good. It's so good. It really is. I can't believe it. It's probably one of the best battered fish I've ever had. I secretly left the camera rec recording so you guys know we're not faking it. <laughs> <laughs> I cannot believe it. Seriously, no BS, guys. The shark is just, it's so good. You know, you catch a little shark and you're, like Brian said, you're like, what the heck am I gonna do with this thing? I, I'm sure most people are probably intimidated by a shark. They probably don't know how to fillet it, how to clean it, but guess what? We got a catch clean cook to show you guys now. It was really good fried. Um, if you ever want to consider taking one, they have a really firm texture, so you could do a ton of things with them. You could certainly throw it directly on the grill. You could broil it, you could bake it. Um, the most important thing though, like with any fish is, your fish is only gonna taste as good as what you did to prepare. If you don't gut that thing immediately, if you don't bleed fish, if you don't ice fish, if you let them sit in the fridge for too long, that's where you're not gonna have a 10 out of 10 dish, you know? It's all about freshness and preparing it. I wanna say something. <clears throat> We've caught so many of those little sharks before, and some days, will be drift fishing for muttons and not catch anything except for those little sharks. A lot of times after hurricanes, there's tons of them when the water's like all stirred up, we'll catch them. Like every single bait down, we'll catch one of those sharks and we won't catch any muttons. We'll go home with an empty cooler, but heck, if that ever happens again, when we don't have anything and we catch one of those, they're so good. I would not think twice about keeping another one. And that was one shark that fed five people. Yeah, honestly, I am hoping, wish we had more. <laughs> it's really good. And with recipes like this, it's easy to become derivative and kind of boring because everyone's had battered fish before. But changing up the fish that you're cooking with shark, mm -hmm. it actually is so, so different. good and so different. It's, I, it's pretty amazing. I wanna thank you guys so much for watching. Like I said, for like the fourth time, if you guys wanna see the fish head soup recipe, linked below on my second channel. And that's all the time I got for you guys. I'm gonna enjoy dinner with the family and I'll catch you guys in that next video.